So with so many means of getting involved with news and politics and information, how can students become unbiased and informed about today's politics? Uh, so I would say um, one key is to get all different aspects of the news. So don't just watch Fox, watch CNN, watch NBC, uh, watch um, all, all channels you can. The, the pitch and staff for Houston was just incredible. On the way to winning the World Series that year. And then the very next year, they didn't even show much of a fight after Gary Sanchez took out the Red Sox in game two. They just, they were told no show. And they did made it interesting in game four. Oh yeah, that, that ninth win. inning was incredible. Yeah. I did a whole spiel on that ninth inning. For me this season, I just, again, same thing. I think this Yankee team is better than the 2017 team. It's good. It's just like, this is the starters though. If we're going to go up against Houston, you know, starter for starter, they got us on the edge here, especially making that deal with Zach Granke. Because now they have Verlander, Garrett Cole, Zach Granke is their one, two, three. That's going to be tough to hit. Now, if we get them to play him here, maybe we can beat him up. But down there, for some reason, we just don't hit those guys. So, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we know for a fact they're going to face either the Houston Astros or the Cleveland Indians. It's just a matter of what, what series they're going to face them at. Yeah, true. And it's also a matter of fact that whoever comes out of the National League, whether it be the Philadelphia Phillies or the Milwaukee Brewers or the Chicago Cubs, we could see a Yankee versus Chicago Cubs series. Welcome to another episode of Nothing But That Sports Talk. I'm Rafiq Louisan, alongside my special guest of this town, Monica McNutt. You see her on MSG, you see her on ACC Network, <laughs> and you see her killed it in Georgetown, taking them all the way to the Sweet 16. How does it feel like for you? It's just, it's just a lot that you've done during the past <laughs> decade as a sports person. Oh my gosh, Rafiq, you're making me feel old and accomplished because in my mind i only stopped playing basketball like two years ago and so all of the accomplishments that have actually taken what i graduated 2011 it's taken closer to 10 years to achieve i'm super proud of it all um it's been a journey um and i now understand why they call it a process because you really can't skip steps what did you want me to say about trusting the process you know, I don't always go for all of his antics, but you do have to. How do you feel about some of these basketball players on the court right now, as you see, having a chance to play on this amazing court that you and a bunch of other people put together Look in Homer's and Louis Tunes? Look around. Everybody has their phones out. Everyone's enjoying it right now. It's unbelievable, and I'm just blessed to be part of this experience, and I'm sure you feel this. Man, that they was crazy. You really? They should have lost? I think so. Zion Williamson, He's, he went LeBron James on that guy that was guarding him. Yeah, I'm I like, think. How can you tell me that you just should have lost that game? And RJ, RJ Barry bailed him out when he missed a chance to tie the game. They were the professional broadcasters who came out of FUV have really set that bar high. Some of America's best known sportscasters and sports analysts starring their careers right here in these halls. Some of those sportscasters are icons in New York, like New York Yankees announcer and ESPN host Michael Kay. That one's drilled deep to right field. It is high. It is far. It is gone. Yeah, we were just talking about an earlier episode of this podcast because my friend Rugali, who graduated with me, he even mentioned how sick that those two shots by Akira Kuhn really was. Yeah, Rike showed out for her. It, it was great for women's basketball because, well, first of all, shout out Notre Dame, ACC all day, just shameless plug. But um, <laughs> the interest in it, the, the, the way she hit those game winners was so amazing and it, and it propelled the interest level with the W. There'll never be another guy like Dwayne Wade, no. especially since he hit that one legged gateway shot against the Gold State Warriors of what the goal. That was awesome. He just, had, he just had a great final season. Great final season, yo. Yeah, you'll never find another guy like Dwayne Wade. Never. Especially since he's won three championships. One with Shaquille O'Neal, two with LeBron James. Yeah. You gotta admit, you did say that DeAndre Russell and Kyrie Irving would not make a good duel team. Nah, they wouldn't. It wouldn't have worked. So, it, it was pretty smart for the Brooklyn Nets. It was pretty smart. I mean, I am kind of disappointed that D'Angelo Russell had to leave, but you know what? It's for the best. I agree. Because I know he's going to continue to keep the Golden State Warriors consistent, especially when they go into the new arena this season coming up. Right. And plus, the UV music director, Russ Boris, says this station is known for music discovery. When you hear music discovery, what goes through your mind? You know, you're trying to turn people on to the music they need to hear. Um, new artists, I think a lot of times what happens now is that uh, listeners who aren't necessarily familiar with what WFUV does might think, 
hey, there's not as much cool new music out there as there used to be. Uh, they might have grown up at a different time or a different era of radio where uh, they had some, you know, certain expectations for what they were going to hear. He's, 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 good. he's a good score, but his rebounds the same for Michigan State. And Cassius Winston, almost 19 points and 7 assists per game, he's a big contributor. The way how he finds players in and out of the paint from around the court, the way how he managed to get his team together in late game situations, developing the chemistry, knowing how to coexist. Whenever he can't hit a game winning shot, he rely on his teammates like Kenny Goins. That's going to be determined as we roll on the season and in conference play. Right. And let's not forget, he's playing for the same Duke that won a lot of championships right. and brought out a lot of legends. But Chris Duan, I, I could go on and hey. on and on about it. But Big shout out to Chris Duan. He's a good hey. player. Like, I could go on and on and on about the the, the legends that came out of Duke. This is Rafi Cluzo and nothing but that b-ball talk. And I'm sitting here with C.J. Leslie. How you doing today? As your team managed to pull off another win. What was it like getting your second win of the season? Um, it was good. We, I mean, we felt like we had to get this one. We felt like we let the last one go. We let two go. So, you know, this was just kind of, we came in with the mindset that we had to get this one, you know, just from being from the fact that we, we felt like we let two of them slide from us. Google says that Fordham students should enjoy every minute of working at UV. Starting to push yourself to think outside the norm, pushing yourself to um, think creatively is so important to get into your system early on because that will only benefit them later on um, in their journalism careers. You mentioned you mentioned Serge Ibaka, you mentioned Valentinus, and I guess that means you have to lead to the Toronto Raptors who are now in the top two in the Eastern Conference again. And what's at this time, you don't have to worry about LeBron James until at right. least the NBA Finals. Right. So. right. And what's very interesting is the fact that they've been able to hold that spot down without Kawhi playing like all the significant minutes. What do you have to do in order to win your next game? Because I know you got a lot of tough games coming up to close out the, the Big Three, Season Three. I think just approach it the same way like we have these last two. Um, approach it like it's must-win games, and I think if you do that, you put the pressure on guys to come out and compete. So I think if we continue to have that same mindset, then we'll be fine. Yeah, um, that was another impressive win for Team Concept over Team Kemba. How does it feel to come off with this win? Uh, man, it was good to, to bounce back, man. Last week we lost, so, you know, we was we was all angry, ready to get it back, and it was just good. It was good atmosphere, you know, great team win, man. Another one for us. New York has a lot of local channels, but not all of them go to the Bronx regularly to provide the exclusive programming for the Bronx community. There is room for stations like BronxNet to provide the program exclusive to the Bronx community. Many guests appear on Open to discuss politics, entertainment, and education topics with a Bronx lifestyle. What was your mindset going into this game and going to these last few clutch defensive stops? I mean, we had to pull this one out. We came this far. Shit, we just traveled over the bridge, so we had to get this one. This would know. Not to mention, you took first place over to Dominican Power, and uh, looks like these guys don't even have any power left after that one. Yeah, because we got the power. With the WBA season coming back, even though it's not really supposed to, what are you looking forward to the most right? between the kinetic, the Washington Mystics defending their WBA title to the rise of Sabrina Inescu after a crazy four years in the college basketball? Well, I am definitely looking at the New York Libs, and I know a lot of people have feelings about Sabrina because they're like, you know what? I have feelings for Sabrina. <laughs> I would think you would have good feelings about Sabrina, but I could be wrong. Um, because you do, you have good ones? Yes, I okay. do. I mean, okay. I've been telling people this. Sabrina is going to be the Zion Williamson of WNBA. I've been saying that as well. Um, I would say... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, this is Luffy Clues on nothing but that sports talk. I want to ask you, like, Sabrina Nescu has done a pretty good job in the first couple of games, going from 12 points to last game to 33 points. What is she, What do you think that she has to do to develop and help the Liberty get this win over the Atlanta Dream tonight? Um, I think it's you know it's it's going to be a it's going to be a, a team effort, um, just like any game. I think Sabrina's focus is always going to be what do I need to do to help the team win, and, and some nights that's going to be get. 15 rebounds and 10 assists, and maybe she takes four shots because of how they're guarding her, and she knows that they're spending two people, so she tries to find the open player. Um, other nights, like what we just saw against Dallas, she knew she had to assert herself and then take more shots, and she did. Um, I think with Sabrina, it's it's always a learning process for her. She's learning her teammates. She's learning the system. 
we're learning how much do we make play calls on the bench versus how much do we let them have the agency as the as the point guards her and Lasia to make play calls. Um, you know, so this is it's it's a learning curve for everybody. Um, you know, Sabrina's absolutely somebody who that applies to, but I don't think it applies to her any more than anyone else uh, on the team or on the staff. You know what? When I look back at plays like that, it really defines the type of guy Tim Duncan is. I did not expect him to hit that three-pointer in overtime against the Suns back then. I, I, that was back when the Suns had Shaquille O'Neal when he was in the last couple of years of his career. And, and you mean yeah. to tell me you still couldn't beat Tim Duncan back then? At least they were able to sweep him in the 2010 playoffs, but Back when they were just so too. stacked. It does, yeah, yeah. It just you would see really that with Manu the and Parker. Yeah. I mean, Duncan three. wasn't the MVP when they won it all in 07, but you know what? Tony Parker was all over the place, and Robert Ory yeah. was being the crutch in for that team. You couldn't hit the 100%. crutch three-pointer that put the Spurs up by four against Kamara at these Nuggets. Right. What was your, like, what were your favorite episodes of the podcast you've done so far during this one-year span? I'm so it's important that we ask ourselves that because me and Chris are always like so knee deep. But I would say the WrestleMania 35 recap was probably my favorite only beca because it's WrestleMania. Exactly. So it yeah, we did. And this is like one of the most emotional episodes of this sports podcast I've ever done. I never thought I'd be sitting here talking about an NBA player that actually passed away. On the same day, we had the WWE World Rumble, the Grammy Awards. Yeah. One week before the 49ers take on the Chiefs of Super Bowl. This overshadows all of that. When you look back at all the players you guarded, what was the toughest competition for you during your playing days? Brittany Griner. We only, I only played her in the NCAA tournament, though. And not that I had to personally guard her, but just dealing with her. Maya Moore, who was in my same class, and so I saw her twice a year, if not three times, because we would see them in the Big East tournament under the old configuration of the Big East. Although UConn is coming back to the Big East. Good decision by the Huskies.